Have you ever wondered how do you make pretzels at home, and especially how do you do it safely? Well, today on WTF, we're going to look at sodium hydroxide and everything that goes into making pretzels and more. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, the owner of Modernist Pantry. Today, Scott and I, we're going to be talking about sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be covering exactly how exactly do you make delicious, delicious pretzels out of a variety of different breads with it. So I'm really excited to see what Scott's come up with today, because I kind of already know, and it's super good. So definitely <laughs> stick around for all the demos. So yeah, first, we should really get, kind of get into a demo because really it's, it's about seeing what we're going to do with it. But a um, few things we need to understand is that lye is a caustic soda. Mm -hmm. So when we mix it with water, uh, we don't want to get it on our skin. We don't want to get it on organic materials like this table. Mm -hmm. If I were to pour a little bit on this table, it would start to corrode and eat actually into the table itself. Right. Things like uh, stainless steel work really great or mm -hmm. uh, plastic, you know, if you want to hold it in a plastic bowl, those mm -hmm. work great. But you don't want to put it onto, you know, um, a cutting board or anything like that in its uh, liquid form. After yeah. it gets cooked, it evaporates off and it is safe to eat. Yeah, and I think you also mentioned if you have really nice like granite or marble countertops, <laughs> definitely make sure that you don't get any of that on there because then yeah. you'll get pitting, which will suck and ruin your countertop. Yeah, it'll just eat, eat a hole right into it. Yeah. And um, mm. yeah, so when you're using this, just be extremely cautious. Uh, it does make for really amazing pretzels. It, really the only way to get the proper pretzel texture and taste. Mm -hmm. uh, just be cautious when you're doing it. I like to wear two sets of gloves and we'll see a little bit why uh, later. Uh, it's just easy to, to remove the gloves that way and then continue to move the uh, sodium hydroxide around. So I want to get into this demo really quick because we have a lot of things to show off. And awesome. This is our pretzel recipe. You can find the recipe on the blog. Um, so what I've done is I made the dough, proofed it once, folded my pretzels. These are nice little like soft roll, mm. dinner roll kind of pretzels. Mm -hmm. and there's actually going to be an extra video showing this entire recipe yep. uh, off. And uh, I'm just going to take these, and they're just on a uh, like double sheeted um, parchment paper on top of a stainless steel sheet pan. Don't use a non-stick, like if you have a nice uh, non-stick sheet pan, right. it will eat through and it will take off all the non-stick. Mm, yeah. So we don't want to do that. It's very simple. We're just going to dip gently into the sodium hydroxide. And if it sticks to your glove, that's fine. And after you roll it once or twice, let any excess come off. And then we're going to put it right back on. And notice I have the bowl extremely close to the sheet pan, right. so I'm not dripping on the table. Any, yes. any like splashing mm -hmm. or anything like that. And go very gently with this. We don't need to be, um, like you said, splashing and getting it right. all over the table. Because we're not trying to soak the pretzel. No. And no. it's merely just getting it on that surface. Yes, right. and you're getting it on the surface. And what that does is it creates a caustic burn on the surface. So it actually starts to cook the pretzel slightly. Mm -hmm. So when we put it into the oven, it will then have that really beautiful um, golden brown quicker. So mm -hmm. that's how you get that crispy crunch of the pretzel itself. Okay. So here's a quick trick. When you have two sets of gloves, you find the, uh, the end of the glove and you pull. And then with your fingers through the glove, you find the other end and they invert on each other. And then you can discard without having to get sodium hydroxide all over your kitchen. Great. Good so to know. Do you want to put some uh, some salt on these? Yes, you can see right. my contribution to this demo <laughs> right here. <laughs> so Ooh. yeah, just a little bit of salt. We're using like a high quality sea salt. You can get the traditional pretzel salt that works fine. I, I like the way that this looks and tastes on the pretzels. I like the pink salt. Yeah, the pink salt can work as well. Any any salt. I don't like there to put go. things like sesame seeds or anything on there because mm -hmm. the sodium hydroxide will eat those and, and start to break them down. Okay. So we're going to get rid of these and we're going to move in some of our other demos, and I'm actually going to put this bowl of sodium hydroxide Ooh. far away from everything. Now that we have these, I'll get rid of my other good. set of gloves. That way there is no cross-contamination. Nothing here has come in contact with, I um, actually need the cutting board, I need all the other ones. Oh. Yeah, everything for this demo. There we go. All right, perfect. So I have this for the burger itself. Okay. Move this a little bit. All right. So I took our brioche recipe, right? 
for the crackling. Yep. Remember the crackling we did? In, uh, that was episode 137 for shelf life extension. I was testing, Jane. Exactly. She, she knew. So mm -hmm. I took that and I actually used a uh, silicone brush and I just paint the top of the, the dough and I was able to make a pretzelized brioche. We Ooh. actually borrowed this idea from uh, Modernist Bread. They had talked about pretzelizing mm -hmm. some of their, their bread. So we took our brioche recipe and we pretzelized the top to give it a little bit more texture. Toast the inside, because brioche loves to be toasted. Mm -hmm. And then we have a duck burger. And we're gonna see this recipe in an upcoming episode okay. um, where we cover sodium caseinate. Mm -hmm. So stick around uh, if you're watching this a few weeks later go and watch that sodium caseinate episode. If right. not, check on the blog, it should be there. Okay, uh, and I believe that's going to be episode number 144, so okay. yeah. go so, ahead. Mm -hmm. So just stick around, we're gonna do this in a, in a future episode. Um, so I have this really beautiful duck burger that we made, it has porcini mushrooms, but like I said, we'll talk about it in that episode. Mm -hmm. And here I have a little uh, mayonnaise, it's a kumquat mayonnaise that we made here. Oh it's so good. The <laughs> kumquat mayonnaise is so good. It's amazing. And if you want the recipe for that, we don't have one right now, but if you really want it, let us know in the comments so that way we can, uh, we'll write one up for you. It's the best. You can put it on everything. <laughs> yes, it, it really is. So I like to put it on the bottom because that creates like a fatty layer to protect us from, you know, the juices of this duck burger. Okay. Best part about the duck burger, it's about 40% fat, <laughs> so it's almost like a duck confit burger. Ugh. So it's so delicious. <laughs> like uh, it's one of my favorite things, and I think we had the same, same the duck sausage was in. Um, what was I other? We made a made a pate and crew. We but did. That's another secret recipe that Ooh. will eventually be coming oh to you guys true. out there. So I have our duck burger, and I'm just gonna place it right on top. Ooh, that I have looks a nice, so good. Nice piece of triple cream brie. And the mm. duck burger is hot enough; it's going to melt that. And triple cream brie is so uh, soft that it'll almost act like the fat is pouring out of the duck burger, mm. but it's not because it's actually made like a duck sausage. Okay. So it's all the fat is encased in there. I like for burgers to have green leaf lettuce. It's a mild lettuce, not gonna add any flavor, but you get that crunch in that nice green. Mm -hmm. And then I always put tomato on top because I don't want the tomato to seep down into the burger. Right. And then top it off and you have the world's largest burger, it looks like. How good but does that look? <laughs> it looks but so But it's yummy. amazing, right? I'm just gonna eat it. So Janie, let's take a quick break so we can get the pretzels out here and do a few more demos. And we're back. <laughs> that was After fast. a quick break, yeah, <laughs> just, just like that. So we, we have a few different types of pretzels. We have the, the, uh, the soft roll ones that we did, they're just basically a really simple knot. Mm -hmm. And then we did a traditional, you know, nice beautiful pretzel uh, that is wrapped. And after you bake them, you can see that gorgeous crust. And even if they mm -hmm. crack a little bit, you notice that it hasn't seeped in. No, I love right. how like how beautiful and shiny they look. Yes. So. so let's do a few different things, a few different um, presentations that we can do. If we have this large one, I really like to just do some nice whole grain mustard that you can get pretty much at any store. Just put it a little bit down, just give it a good push. Put your pretzel right on top of it. And then in the corner, just some homemade pickles. Mm. And there's gonna be an upcoming episode where we show you how to make a lot of quick pickles with a little bit of different uh, you know, flavors to each one in a, um, an episode that we're gonna showcase our culinary acids. So stick around for those uh, yeah. in the coming weeks. So oh, we have a nice beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah, a nice be and this really gorgeous cutting board too. Mm -hmm. So if we're gonna do, let's say like a, uh, a bread course, and I wanted to add these, um, these gorgeous bread rolls, right? And I just kind of stick them. Yeah, or if you just want to have dinner rolls and you want yeah. something that's not the everyday dinner roll, a of nice course. pretzelized dinner roll is really, a, it's really a surprise, right? Yeah. So if we do this, and pretzels are really uh, hot now in, in a lot of different places, especially with like gastro pubs. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of the the nice, you know, the same exact ingredients just presented two different ways. Okay. So if someone's watching this and they're thinking to themselves, can I just pretzelize any bread? Is that yeah. the case? Like you can just dip any any dough into sodium hydroxide and you can get that crust or is it certain types of bread don't work as well? Well, dipping the dough is going to be difficult for a lot of different uh, breads. So mm -hmm. if you're doing a, a high hydration bread, something like uh, a ciabatta, you almost can't lift that dough up, mm -hmm. put it into the liquid. You'd have to brush it, but you want to touch that dough as little as possible. Mm -hmm. A sturdy dough like the pretzel dough is very easy. I can pick it up. I can put it into the sodium hydroxide. I can put mm -hmm. it back on. The brioche, 
once it's proofed, I can't lift it up. Okay. It'll lose its, uh, its you know, structure so fast. So mm -hmm. it depends on which one you're doing. If you notice you can't lift it up, get a, a silicone brush because it's not going to eat through that. Mm -hmm. Just brush some on top. Okay. Well, that's really good to know. And if somebody does want to, I'm sure this will all be on the blog, but mm -hmm. they're like, how much sodium hydroxide do I put into that water to get the proper solution? So 50 grams to a liter. You can yeah. go as low as 25 grams to a liter. I like the 50 grams because it gives that really hard kind of crust and that shine to it. Okay, yeah. so if you don't use enough, you're not gonna get like the nice crust. It's gonna be pale. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot there? more time in the liquid. Okay. So if you're working fast, like, like you just saw me do, just mm -hmm. putting it into the liquid, mixing it around and taking it off, it's done its job. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I think one of the nice things is that it makes making pretzels at home super easy, right? Like yes. it doesn't seem like, it always feels like something you have to, at least in my experience, get at a street cart or something. But, yeah, you know. and sometimes those just come frozen and then reheated inside this oven. You don't know how long they've been there. Mm -hmm. But when you eat one of these that are fresh out of the oven, it, it's, it's like nothing you've ever had. Yeah, it's, it's super, super good. Like we've had a ton of these during the testing phase. Oh, they're delicious. And the dough is extremely easy to make. So mm -hmm. brioche is a little bit more intermediate, a little bit more difficult. But mm -hmm. if you're making this pretzel dough and you're not really... Um, the avid baker, you can make this dough and not screw it up. Yeah. There's enough yeast in it and very little uh, amounts of like sugar and whatnot. It will come together. It will work. Yep. And we, I think you already mentioned it, but we do have a separate like little mini video that's mm -hmm. all about making these pretzel dinner rolls. So you can always just check that out. Yep. It's going to go into a little bit more detail on a step-by-step -step on how exactly you do it. And that's going to work really well with the recipe. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else we want to leave folks with today? No, I think just try out this recipe uh, and don't be scared of sodium hydroxide. As mm -hmm. long as you take the proper precautions, you're not going to you know, eat a hole in your countertop. Mm -hmm. Just be careful with it. And if you want to dispose of it, this is kind of um, one of these things that people don't know. What do I do with it? There's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, Googling. How do I dispose of this? It's very simple. If you take some vinegar and you pour it in there, it's going to neutralize it. There then you, you can just you can pour it down your drain. I wouldn't suggest just going and dumping it in your lawn because it's going to eat a hole and probably you know, hurt some animals or whatnot. So mm -hmm. don't do that, but definitely neutralize it with some acid, mm -hmm. and then you can uh, pour it down the drain. That's a perfect yep. tip to, uh, to leave up on. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garrett. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want these great recipes and these awesome ingredients, first you're gonna to have to like, comment, and subscribe. And then you're gonna to go to blog.modernistpantry.com where you can find those awesome recipes and you can ask a chef. And to get these great ingredients, go to modernistpantry.com. And until next time, we'll be here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen helping you transform food.